Hey folks, this is Riker, and we just got to see three Diablo 4 developers compete live in a preview of the upcoming leaderboard activity, The Gauntlet. In today's campfire chat, we learned more about The Gauntlet and other changes coming in the March 5th update. But we also got some news about Season 4, including news about something that I have basically been begging to see added to the game. So let's give a summary of what we learned today. First off, Gauntlet launching next Tuesday, March 5th, along with the mid-season update. Recently, the devs teased the return of vampiric powers, and yes, they are returning, but I hyped myself up too much. I thought they would be returning as some form of mechanic, but they're actually going to be returning in the form of legendary powers. So six vampiric powers are coming back as new legendary aspects. They're not going to be one-to-one -one copies of what they were, but close enough. The big one that most people are going to be happy about is metamorphosis. That was the one where you dodge into a bunch of bats. Now, however, it's being nerfed with a cooldown on evade of 5 to 10 seconds. Some great news is that they're fixing snapshotting. Ideally, they're trying to remove it wherever they can. They're slowly working away at it. Snapshotting is when you're able to retain a buff for longer than the game wants you to. It's almost an exploit, or arguably an exploit. It's just a lot of people do it unintentionally. Let's say you have a 4 second damage buff. Well, if while you have this buff up, you start a channeled skill, for instance, like Whirlwind, well, until you stop Whirlwinding, you will still have that buff snapshotted on you. It doesn't fall off after four seconds. So now they're fixing that. The mid-season update will also include a bunch of balance changes. They didn't cover everything, we'll be getting patch notes tomorrow, but there's some nerfs to some of the Seneschal's overperforming powers. No nerfs to Barbarian. In fact, there's some buffs to its early game skills. Barb is one of the weaker leveling classes, so this is nice. I mean, it's coming a little late in the season to help with leveling, but hey, this is rolling out to the game forever, so that's great. Early game Barb needs some love. They're also now once again buffing Gores. When the game launched, Gores devastating grips were way too strong. They nerfed it. Now they're buffing it up again, not quite all the way, but trying to bring Whirlwind back here. For the Sorceress, Incinerate is getting incredibly buffed. We're also seeing some buffs to Conjuration skills. For the Druid, same thing like the Barb, early game buffs, particularly with Generation it seems. Early game Druid has some pretty severe resource issues. This ought to help. We're also seeing huge buffs to Companion Druid. Wolves, Poison Creeper, Ravens, oh my. In some cases, we're seeing something like uh, 10 times damage output. For the Rogue, we're seeing some buffs to ranged builds. Art Seeker and Forceful Arrow. They're having their attack speed increased by 20% to make them more competitive with Puncture. Flurry's getting some buffs as well. For the Necromancer, this is the start of some massive buffs to minion builds. Right off the bat, 20% damage buff across the board for minions. Lots of buffs everywhere here to minions in general. Necro's also getting some significant move speed buffs. It's not getting a mobility skill, but it's gaining the ability to stack move speed. Now there's one glyph that'll make you gain move speed per active minion. And they're also reworking Death's Reach to Death's Advance, which now just passively gives you move speed. This is a great way to really help the Necro's mobility issue while still making them feel distinct from other classes by not just giving them a mobility skill. They also said that they want our feedback, they want our opinion, on one particular matter, and that's, let's say they're working away at something, they've made a couple of legendary items for the Sorcerer. Do they wait to have parity between all classes before releasing this? As in, do they wait to have a couple items for every single class, and then release everything, potentially delaying it months? Or do they just, here, we, we made this cool stuff for the Sorcerer, let's release it now, and then when we make Barbarian stuff, we'll release that. I personally am cool with them rolling out stuff faster to us. I don't care if my favorite class doesn't get something special this time, as long as it eventually does, because I know I'm in it for the long haul, but I can understand other people feel differently, so do sound off in the comments about that. Again, the devs want feedback on how to proceed there. And then we got our Gauntlet Showcase. This was an event co-casted by Macrobioboy and Anacake Live. And one thing to note about the Gauntlet, once you're inside, your gear, skill tree, and paragon are all locked, so no shenanigans where you can swap around gear and stuff like that, which is good. That is not fun gameplay, same thing with the snapshotting. It's not fun to have these quasi-exploit things that you gotta do to maximize your efficiency. So what is the gauntlet? Again, this is the new competitive activity being added to the game forever. It's not just for Season 3. And what it is, is every week we're gonna get a new gauntlet dungeon. This is a fixed, non-linear dungeon where your objective is to get the highest score possible. You have eight minutes, and every time you try out the dungeon, and every time everyone in the world tries out this dungeon, it is always exactly the same. Same layout, same monsters, literally same everything. So it's all about 
how good you are at strategizing your path through this gauntlet. It's unclear if it's just this gauntlet or all gauntlets, but we saw when they entered the gauntlet, right away there was a boss. Two out of three players decided to skip the boss and come back to it later, whereas the Hoda Barbarian bonked it immediately. And it seems once you kill a boss, it spawns a special pillar. There's two types of special pillars that can spawn. One is going to give you a temporary buff to how much score you're getting, and the other kind of pillar will respawn all monsters in the dungeon. So you want to be carefully planning when you do this. In the gala we saw, monsters were level 124, which is the equivalent of a Nightmare Dungeon level 70. The objective with the gala here isn't to be Abattoir of Zir tier difficulty. The point isn't to see if you can beat it, the point is to see how well you can do. So this is something where you can sacrifice damage and even survivability to get more move speed, for instance. No items drop, it's just about getting as much score as possible, as fast as possible. Sometimes some of these monsters will drop keys, there are special chests that if you use those keys to open them, they're gonna drop more score. If you die in a gauntlet in hardcore, you are dead forever. If you die in softcore, you drop one third of your score and respawn at the start of the dungeon or something. And then you can run back to pick up your drop score, but that's a significant time penalty. You can do these solo, you can do them in a team, your teammates can pick up your score for you. And then depending on how well you do, at the end of things, you can earn one of four seals. Well, I guess you can earn all four seals. You start off with the seal of the blooded, you get that just for completing the gauntlet, and then reaching specific amounts of score will earn you better and better seals until you get the seal of the worthy. And you have to get a seal of the worthy in order to qualify to even be on the leaderboards. You can retry the gauntlet as many times as you want. You can earn all seals and every seal also comes with some small reward. They don't want the purpose of the gauntlet to be to farm the rewards, but they do want to give you something. So you have like a cache with some 925 items and a really good chance of getting uniques. So 925 uniques. And again, this resets every week so you can get those caches every week. And then the leaderboards themselves are separated by party size, normal hardcore, by class. So if you're running a solo necromancer, you're not competing against Hoda Barbarians. But if you're in a party of two, you are competing against all other parties of two. So there's 16 different leaderboards every week. And if at any time you reach the top 100 of any ladder, you're going to earn a Conqueror's Crest Mount Trophy. And if you manage to get top 10 in any leaderboard, you'll have your name and character immortalized in the permanent Hall of the Ancients. We don't really know what that is yet, but it's something. Our three devs each managed to earn the Seal of the Worthy. The first got a score of 195,000, the second got a score of 215,000, and the third on a Hoda Barbarian got a score of 299,000. That happened to be Leviathan, Diablo streamer turned Diablo dev, showing the power of a charged Hoda Barb in the gauntlet. Then we also got more of a teaser than anything about Season 4. This is going to be, it sounds like it's going to be the most substantial update to the game yet. Uh, significantly bigger than the Season 2 change that reworked Vulnerable and all that. It does sound like itemization is going to be the core part of this. So people suspecting that the itemization rework was going to get pushed back, it sounds like it is not. Then the single best news today. We are getting a PTR for Season 4. For these giant changes, again, for what is going to be the most important patch of Diablo 4 so far, we are getting a PTR. A PTR is a public test server where anyone who owns the game can participate. It's like a, a beta test for the upcoming content and you can give your feedback so that it's not the game, the, 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 the season 4 launches and then everyone voices their opinion. It's before it launches, we voice our opinions, they can make changes so that when we launch, things can be as good as possible. Now, this is not a promise, however, to always have a PTR. It sounds like they're going to reserve it only for big patches, but we're definitely getting one for Season 4. They're planning to start the PTR while Season 3 is still running, but no date yet. However, they said in a couple weeks we're going to have another campfire chat where they're going to talk all about that. It's said to be a beefy campfire chat. Oh, and PTR is only open to people playing on Battle.net on PC. During the Q&A, we learned that in next week's patch, they are making some changes to Uber Unique Crafting. You might remember that they recently added a patch that allows you to break down five Uber Uniques to craft one Uber Unique of your choice. After feedback, they're changing that to four instead of five. A lot of people have been asking to change it to three, but it sounds like what they want is for Uber Uniques to still be rare. Also, they've significantly buffed your odds of getting Uber Uniques outside of Duriel. 
the drop rate's about a thousand times what it was. I cover that in this video over here. So they they want to see how things play out first, but they said that for season four, maybe they'll they're they're open to adjusting it further to maybe three once they see how things play out. They said they want Uber Unix to still be aspirational. And honestly, that's what I want as well. I I want Uber Unix to be aspirational. I say this as someone who has done hundreds of Durial runs and gotten zero Shackos. I'm fine with not having gotten a Shacko. I mean, am I sad? Sure, but like I'm not rage quitting the game over it. I don't feel I I am owed a Shacko. I am okay with it continuing to be something that I am striving for and I hope I will one day get. They want Uber Unix to be things that you don't need or your build, there's something that will supplement your build, that'll make it more awesome, but it's not needed to have fun on your class. And a Shaco that gives you plus four to all your skills, yeah, no one needs a Shaco, but hell, is it gonna feel good to have one. Now, they were asked if season four is gonna add any end game content. They can't talk about season four, but they basically said that yes, they directed us to tune into the campfire chat for the PTR. So things to look forward to there as well. They were also asked if Avatar of Zero is coming back, and they said to tune into the PTR stream. So I don't know if that meant literally Avatar of Zero or just some kind of endgame content that is analogous to Avatar of Zero. Apparently the dev team has active conversations going around about potentially earning skins or things about the shop. I would hope for this. I, I think having dedicated players who put in a lot of hours in the game be able to earn platinum or otherwise earn more of these cosmetics, I think would be really good for the game. And I don't mean that just because I want all the skins for free, which yeah, I do, but like, people are going to play the game more if they can earn the skins. It sounds like Nightmare Vaults are not going to return in Season 4, but they are taking note of their role in the game and knowledge about that will be applied in future content. About an armory in order to like uh, rapidly change your build, they've reiterated that that's something that they're interested in. It seems everyone on the team wants to do it, but they have no ET on when that's going to happen. And again, next campfire chat in a couple of weeks. So that wraps up our summary, folks. What are your thoughts? Is the gauntlet what you hoped it would be? It sounds like there's stuff there, even if you're not a competitive player, you can still just run it to get a little bit of rewards. It reminds me of challenge rifts in Diablo 3, where I would do the challenge with once a week just to get that reward, but I didn't care to compete for the, the leaderboard position on it. Overall, my position remains that season four is gonna be really the season that could bring back people who have stopped playing. I would almost say season four is a make or break season for Diablo 4. But again, what are your thoughts? Sound off in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.